two modes of execution two modes of execution interactive mode and batch mode here we here we type python statements directly on the python interpreter interact with it statement by statement okay and batch mode means just like other programming languages we write a batch of statements set of statements and save it by using dot py extension that is submitted to python right now integrated development environment integrated development environment we have got various ideas so that uh, So batch mode here we write batch of statements with an editors or IDs and save it by using dot py extension data submit to Python. Uh, batch of statements. Okay. Editors, what are the editors means? Like within the notepad editor, no edit, edit plus, notepad, edit plus, vi, nano, right? One second. So uh, one second, various editors, not yes. Notepad, Edit Plus, VI, and Nano. Okay. Fine. Uh, just like other programming languages, also we'll write within this uh, batch of statements. C also will write statements and say dot C, right? In Java also we write set of statements and say dot Java, right? In the same manner for Python also we say set of statements and uh, where you where you write means in Notepad you can write, Edit Plus you can write. VI and Nano means in Linux, we have got VA editors and Nano editors, right? There also you can write and create .py file and we can. So various IDs, various IDs, VS code I'm said here, right? It comes as an ID. So our editors like, we can write that code and you can execute the code in VS code or in Atom ID, Jupyter okay. Notebook. Hmm? I'll show you all this uh, downloading installation process of all these IDs, right? I'll show you how to work within this PyCharm ID, which is mostly used in that. And I'm going to, yes, uh, those who are in the online, can you please confirm whether my voice is clear or not? Clear, sir. Fine. Okay. So uh, in the real time, we are going to use IDs, right? So depending upon different environments, we are going to use different IDs, right? So if it is like a data science environment, like Jupyter Notebook, we are going to use. For big data environment, if you are using Python as implementation, then you use like Spider ID, and even Jupyter Notebook is used. For web applications, creations using Python, PyCharm is mostly preferred. VS Code, Atom, these are mostly preferred. But PyCharm is a licensed one. The remaining things, okay, you can just go with it. But mostly used is PyCharm. Even Eclipse is used. Eclipse for Java, it is used, and even Python also, we can use it. Yes. So let me show you developing the first Python application within the editor, I'll say first. Later, I'll show you in IDs how to download and how to install these IDs. Okay. 
developing Python applications. Developing Python application using an editor. Developing Python application using a editor. <coughs> Okay, developing Python application using the editor. Notepad. Just open Notepad and type the following Python statements. Just I want to perform some kind of arithmetic operations. Up to now, we didn't discuss anything about Python, right? So just I want to perform some kind of arithmetic of in Python, no need to observe this, no need to just define any data types directly I can say x as 10 dynamic data types we say in Python, no need to say based upon what value you are assigning to x, what value you are assigning to x 10. So what kind of variable created means integer variable created. If I'm assigning float value 4.5. A float value is going to get created based upon what value that's why we call as dynamic data types no need to define like index or float by or string z like we can based on what value you are assigning based on that the variables are created dynamically y equal to 20 z equal to x plus y so python statements look like normal english statements as if they are not as complex print okay otherwise you can do one thing if i want to perform arithmetic or print x plus y you say print x minus y print x minus y x into y x by y print x by y x plus y x minus y x into y x by y X by y. So just I'll copy this to a separate notepad file. I'll save it as .py extension. Yes. Creating a notepad file. I'm pasting here within this. Save it. Save. Okay. I'm creating a new folder like Python 12 p.m. 12 a.m. Okay. Just I'm saying that I created a folder like Python 12. Here I'm saving it as any name. Sample one dot py dot py. Save it. dot py sorry so okay save it as sample one dot py and submit this to python and submit this to python how to submit this to python just to go to this command from at the bottom search panel, just type CMD and go to the command from type CMD and go to this command from and just type a Python here. Just type Python here and don't say enter. If you say, okay, for example, if you say enter, what happens? Python interpreter opens the 3.9 version. This, uh, this is the inter where you can interact with Python statement by statement. This interactive mode opens. Interactive mode means, for example, any value for x equal to 10, y equal to 4.5. So here, 
I said what is x value? 10. It will interact. Why? 4.5. What is type of x? If you want to know what is the type of x, what type it is? It gives what? Integer type. Type of y. Type of y is what type? Float type. Because what value you have assigned to y? Float value. That is type is float. If you are assigning a string, sequence of characters, okay? so it is string type. So now if you want to x plus y, if you want x minus y, in this way, if you want to perform, understand? So in this way, <clears throat> you want to perform any valid statements, you can, okay? If you want to come out of this interactive mode, say quit, come out of it. Now I doesn't want interactive mode. Actually, I've written some statements, saved it as sample1.py. Now I want to execute the sample1.py. Just type Python, don't say enter. Give the path where your file is available in your system. Within the C drive, in Python, there is a folder created for this batch, Python 12 PM. Within that folder, like I created a folder like sample one dot. PY. Just I am giving that file in which folder, in which drive it is available, that path you specify to. Now submitting this file sample one to Python. Now say enter, it gives should give the output. 10 plus 20, 10 minus 20, 10 into 20, 10 by 20. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, right? Understand. This is how to submit that Python. In the same manner in Linux also, on your Linux terminal, if you just enter Python, your Python interpreter opens. In the same way, create a file using VI editor, nano editor, and submit that file to Python. In Linux, no need to install Python. By default, along with the OS, Linux OS, you are going to get Python as an inbuilt, no need of any separate installation of Python. Okay, if you, if you, want, if you want the latest version of Python to be installed in Linux, by using a command, okay. I'll just say that one second before that. Okay. So how I'm submitting it to Python in this manner. Python in the entire path I need to. And if you want to install the latest version of Python in Linux, sudo. If if you if you're from a Linux background, if you want to work with Linux. This Python within Linux and get install Python 3.9. This is the command to just you can type this command on your terminal. Automatically it will download and it will install this Python 3.9 in Linux. Maybe definitely get install Python 3.9. So, okay, save it as a sample one dot py. Okay, fine. Mm, but here, what is your observation? Here, what is your. We are writing the code at one place. We are writing the code at one place where we are writing within this notepad. And we are executing at the other place. We are executing at the other place, right? Where is the command prompt? But to write and execute at the same place, I want. I said Python can be installed in your Mac OS, Linux, by Windows, even in your smartphones. You got a smartphone. Uh, go to the Play Store and just say Python IDs. Many IDs you'll be getting. You can type your code and you can execute the code in your mobile phones also. But to write and execute it, we have IDLE Integrated Development Environment. We have IDLE which comes along with Python installation, which comes along with Python installation. Using which we 
we can work with both interactive and batch mode using which we can work with both interactive and batch mode we can work with both interactive and batch mode i'm sorry now where can you see this ideally means whenever you have installed python just i showed you the installation process of python. just it takes two to five minutes for installing it so okay <clears throat> if you are absent to the test session you can just uh, go through the video of the test session now observe <clears throat> go to the start programs see that where your python is installed in p python 3.9 right click this python 3.9 what is the first thing you are able to see ideally right ideally okay, okay. ideally right ideal click that ideally python shell will be opened here python shell open right this is what python shell it is open in interactive mode you can take any valid statements here and you can execute it here itself but I doesn't want to work with interactive using interactive mode. Okay, as a beginner, as a learner, uh, if you type anything, it is going to give the response. But for uh, building applications, this interactive mode is not used. We cannot develop an application using interactive mode. So go for batch mode. Batch mode very simple. Here file is there, right? Just say file new file. Here type your code and uh, suggest I'll bring this code. I'll copy this code. Okay. File new file. Here itself we can write it. Here itself we can execute it. First we need to save this. Until then it will it won't allow to execute. See here if I try to execute it, run option is there, right? Run run module. Run run module. It won't execute until it will ask you to save it save before run save before run okay it will ask to save it first so i created a folder right for this branch like python 12 and okay sample 2.py i'm saving it as sample 2. Dot where it has been yes this is the output right 10 plus 20 10 minus 20, 10 into 20 10 by 20 once I can try to execute this now, it got saved, right? Run, run module. Otherwise, the shortcut is FI to execute this. Understand? Here itself we can write. Here itself we can execute the code, right? X plus Y, X minus X. Okay. Understood how to run and execute the code? Yes. So I'll be forwarding the videos to you that are stress and today's videos. And this notes also I'll be forwarding. Okay. Uh, you can go through. Understood, right? How to work with interactive mode and batch mode? Python, in, you cannot see the interactive mode in other programming language. Can you interact in C language statement by statement? Can you get the output? X as 10, Y as 20 second, and Z equal to X plus Y. Can you like? No. No, right? In Java, also not possible. Statement by statement execution. Here, it's possible. <laughs> So I'll show you how to work with the IDs. In real time, we use IDs, right? Like PyCharm, Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook, right? Anaconda distributions I'll be showing you later, how to download and how to install it, okay? Now, coming to this fundamentals of this Python, okay, like uh, Python data types. Python data types. So generally, every organization use case has got data and operations. Every organization use case has got data and operations.
data represented data represented using operations using functions data represented using data types or variables operations using functions any organization you take for example if i take the example of a bank take the example of a bank what a bank consists of customers and plus customers has got data and operations customers has got data and operations right what is the data i want the sessions to be interactive data means like the customer name james account number 3090807 balance Ninety thousand eight seventy five six seven. Some branch. Okay, so this is what data represented using data types are variables. Operations on this data we are going to perform operations. Account number is there, balance is there. I want to I want to just transfer some amount. So so account number and what is the number? Okay, operations means transfer is one. Withdraw operation. Deposit operation. So deposit, withdraw, transfer. All these operations using functions. We'll discuss what is a function, how to define, how to work with it later. But not that is not our concept now. We are going to discuss about data types and variables. Employees also has got a data and operations, right? Employees also has got a data and operations. Data means like employee ID 101, employee name. Salary, some 90,000. Designation, some manager. So this is what some data. What is that? Employees data represented using data types or variables. Operations, you say me, what are the various operations you can perform? Like uh, is provident fund, EF, house rent allowance, tax, Calculating this net salary, calculating tax, all this nothing but operations. Operations on that data. Operations represented using functions. Later we discuss about these functions. But now understood, right? Data represented by using data types are variables. If you take other programming language, C or C++ or Java, if you take other programming compared with Python. So here in Python, I said it's dynamic data types, right? Dynamic data types. If you compare in other language compulsorily, if I want to define X as 10, you need to define int like this. Without int, X cannot be created, right? If I want to say Y equal to 4.5, definitely I need to say float. Without float, the variable Y cannot be created string z equal to some hello but in the case of python directly i can say x as 10 y as 4.5 z as hello no need to give it no need to give the data type set right? based upon what value you are assigning to x based on the value assigned to x the variable x is going to get created what kind of variable x is created integer why it is integer you have assigned an integer value type of x is Python is giving a function called type function to know the type of that variable. Type of y, float time. Type of z, string time. Right? Okay. Understood. Dynamic data types. 
I'll be discussing about this data types in brief, but understood what is dynamic dynamic. So based upon the value, so based upon what value you are assigning to X, the variable X is going to get created dynamically during runtime. Now I'm going to discuss four cases. These are very much important. What happens internally whenever you define a variable here in Python? In Python, in, in C language, integer occupies some size. So what is that size of an integer? In C language, like a two bytes, you say. In Java, you say like four bytes it occupies. In Python, all these are not, they are not like that. Integer is a class in Python float is a class in python string is a class in python everything are classes in python class and object so x equal 10 means an object is going to get created so integer is a class float is a class string is a class list is a class boolean is a class all these are classes here in python there is no fixed size for that so observe here whenever you say x is 10 here Whenever I say type of x, what it is saying? What type it is? Class int. What is that? Class int. Everything is a class here in Python. If you have got knowledge on this object oriented programming, Java, you know what? Is, but later I discuss all those object oriented programming features. But now observe if I define some variables here in Python. I'll come back to these data types again. Okay. If you got any queries, you can ask me here. Defining variables in Python. These things are very important. Defining variables. Yes, one. Whenever I say x as 10, uh, what happens internally? Whenever I say x equal to 10, internally one object gets created with value 10. Observe this internally an object gets created with value 10 the object is going to occupy some address right physical memory location address whenever you store something it is going to occupy some memory address right so 10307 zero, zero, some address think that where x equal to 10 x equal to 10 one object got created the object is stored in some memory location address that memory location address is written to x now X, x equal to 10 means what x stores see here one more one second i say don't say like x stores 10 x stores the address of this object in python x equal to 10 x don't say like x stores 10 x stores the address of this object to make you understand these things so here you need to understand three more things if i say like print x observe here print x means uh, prints the content prints the content at that address prints the content and this this is important make a note of this print x means it goes to that address and prints the content at that address I understand this thing Whenever you say print x goes to that account, goes to that address in that what whatever content it that that content is going to be displayed. Understood every print x means prints the content at that address. At that address, what content? 10. But if I want to print the address, I want to print the address. We have got a function called id of x what is that id of x prints the address of x prints the address one zero three zero seven zero right Print type of x. Hmm. Data type of x. Prints the data type of x. What is that? Integer. 
class integer s. Once again, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear or not? Yes, sir. Those who are in the online, once again, can you please confirm now whether my voice is clear or not? Clear, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Print X prints the content. ID of X prints the address. Type of X prints the data type of X. These three things you need to understand. Whenever you are defining a variable, one object gets created, the object is going to occupy some address. The address will be given to X. Whenever you say print ID of X, prints the address. Print X prints the content at that address. Content at that address, prints the address of X, prints the data type of X. Now observe. Case to you observe. X is 10, Y is 20. How many objects are created internally? Uh, how many objects are created? For X equal to 10, one object, Y equal to 20, one object. Two objects, right? Two objects. The, an object with value 10 creates, it is going to have some address. The address is written to X. Y equal to 20, one object, it is going to have its address. The address is given to Y. Now try to answer print x. Uh, what is the value? 10. Goes to that address and prints that content. What is that? 10. I want to print the address 103090. If you want to see the type, uh, Python is providing the type function to know the type it is integer type. Print y, it is what is that y value? 20. Idea of y. 104080. Type of Y. Yes. Integer. Only understood. Here, this thing, what you need to understand is whenever you are defining two different variables with two different values, then two different objects get created with two different addresses. Two different variables with two different values. Two different objects get created with two different addresses. Understand this? Taking this. Okay. Now, this is simple, but observe this case three based on this.
ओके केस टू टाइप ऑफ फाइव टाइप ऑफ फाइव इज इंटीजर ओनली राइट वाई ट्वेंटी राइट यू हैव असाइन्ड ट्वेंटी व्हाट यू हैव असाइन्ड टू दिस वाई ट्वेंटी यू हैव असाइन्ड ट्वेंटी मींस इंटीजर टाइप ओनली राइट इफ एनीथिंग इन डेसिमल वैल्यूज इट सेट एस फ्लोट टाइप नाउ अब्जर्व दिस सेट केस थ्री नाउ केस थ्री ट्राइ टू आंसर दिस एक्स एस टेन वाई एस टेन how many objects created here how many here one object created here only one object is created observe carefully here observe only one object here X is ten, Y is ten. First, for X equal to ten, one object gets created. It's some address, right? One zero three zero some eight zero. This address up to here is fine, right? X equal to ten, Y equal to ten. One object gets created. Before creating object for Y, first it checks any object with value ten is available in the memory or not. If available, the same address will be given to one. Don't think like one more object with value ten gets created. Duplicate objects won't be created. X is ten, Y is ten, Z also ten. Don't think like uh, three objects with value ten gets created. Only one object and its address is given to X, Y, and Z. X as ten, Y as ten, Z as ten. When the values are same, when the values are same, only one object. If X is ten, Y is twenty, Z equal to thirty. Now try to say Three. how many objects? Three objects. Three objects, right? Okay. Three objects. Okay. <clears throat> But here values are same, only one object. Now if we say X, Y, and Z, they are sharing. The same content and the address. If you say print x, what is the value? Ten. If I say print y, ten. Print z, ten. Print x, print y, and print z. The same ten. Now print id of x. Id of x is one zero three zero eight zero. Id of y, same. Id of y also one zero three zero eight zero. That also the same thing, right? Means the three variables have got same value and the same address. So, what is your observation between case two and case three? If the values are different, different objects created. If the values are same, only one object created. So, this is the basic thing that you need to understand. But generally, people directly they will define the variables. They will just go with it. But you need to know internally what are created, how many objects, one object or three objects or one object. Okay. And what happens if the values are same? Values are different. What happens here? Okay. So here only one object address is given to X, Y, and Z. Now you have taken this case three. I'll show you all these four cases practically. So this I just first to understand this. I'll show you all these four cases practically. Right. Once again, uh, please confirm those who are in the online whether my voice is clear or not.
Yes, anyone in the online now? Try to confirm either through short panel or through us. Yes. Fine, it's clear, right? So if anyone facing problem that is from your side, just uh, check your internet connection once. Okay, now observe this case four. X is 10, X is 20. Previously, X and Y are taken. This time, X is 10, X is 20. Now, how many are anticipated? Two. Two or one? An object with value 10 with some address. So address is given to x for x equal 20 an object 20 an object with value 20 this address is given to x. this is fine application if i say print x what is x value it means your salary last year was fifty thousand. your salary this year seventy thousand. print salary means both salaries will it print what is that? 70,000. Okay. Print X means the latest value it prints, right? Latest value it prints. But what happens to the previous one? What happens to the previous thing? Is it will be, be available, not available? Or if it is available, can I retrieve the value of the previous object? Understanding. Print X again, I will say. Again, it will print 20. 10 times if I say it will print 20 only. Okay. Is there any chance of printing that object value 10? What happens to it? Is it available or it is removed? So to know what happened to this object 10, you want to know what happened to the object 10? So just I want to discuss a small concept, garbage collector in Python. I'll go back to this case three, just observe this, but it's too early to discuss that garbage collector now, but to just say what happened to that object. Once again, during our, uh, when I'm discussing garbage collector, I'll be briefly about with multiple examples, but as of now, just I'll give an overview of what is garbage collector. Garbage collector, I went to the garbage collector. Garbage collector removes unused or unreferenced objects. Removes unused or unreferenced objects. Removes unused or unreferenced objects from the memory. What is the work of garbage collector? Removing unused or unreferred objects from the memory. What do you mean by unused or unreferenced objects? Which objects will say it is unused or unreferred objects? Objects whose reference count becomes zero. Object whose reference count becomes zero. So those objects we call it as unused or unreferred objects. Whose reference count becomes zero, we call it as unused or unreferred objects. Then these objects immediately removed. These objects are immediately removed by the removed by the garbage, garbage, garbage collector by the garbage collector. Understand? Whenever any object reference count becomes zero, then we call them as unused and referred objects. These objects are immediately removed by the garbage. You may ask, what is reference count becoming zero, right? What is reference count becoming zero? Reference count. 
RC I am saying reference count RC nothing but uh, number of variables number of variables pointing to an object pointing to an object just understand the concept later we will be discussing this card what is the garbage cutter with multiple examples with the practical number of variables pointing to an object if four variables pointing reference count will be four if three variables pointing reference count will be three number of variables pointing to an object or number of variables storing number of variables storing address single object number of variables storing address of a single object number of variables pointing to an object a number of variables storing address of a single object variables pointing to an object or variables pointing to address of a set okay now observe this based on this discussion here is an object how many variables are pointing to this object x is pointing to this y is pointing to this z is pointing x is storing this address 103080 y is storing this 103z also number of variables storing the address of this object or number of variables pointing to this so what is the reference count of this object how much hmm. three reference count is what three because three variables pointing are three variables storing the address of this object so slowly observe this you may ask reference count becomes zero then only that an object gets removed how come an object reference count becomes zero how come an object reference count becomes zero for example, slowly y value is 10, right? I will modify that y value to 20. Y value modified to 20 means one more object with value 20 gets created, right? It's some address. That address is written to y. Now y is pointing to the new object. Y is not pointing to this object. Now y is not pointing to 10. Y is made to point to the new object. Now reference count becomes two for this object because only X and Z are pointing to this. Y is pointing to a new object. Slowly I am modifying this Y also to 30. An object 30 gets created with some address. Address is returned to Z, right? Now Z is pointing to the new object 30. Now Z is not pointing to 10. Z is not pointing to 10, right? Now reference count becomes one. one. Only X is pointing to this object at 10. Y and Z they are pointing to different. After, slowly after some time, I've modified the X value also to 50. An object with the value 50 gets created from some address. This address is given to X. X is made to point to a different object, 50. Now X is not pointing to this 10. Now none of the variables pointing right. Reference count is what? Zero. Reference count became zero right now. Means it is this object is unused by or unreferred. Unused or unreferred. No one is using it or nobody is referring it. Unused or unreference and reference count becomes zero. Whenever any object reference count becomes zero, immediately garbage filter removes this object from the memory. Understood this concept, right? So later I'll discuss this again in brief. Okay. But uh, now coming based on this understanding, now coming to this case four. Forget about x equal to 20. First say me about x equal to 10. How many variables pointing to that object 10? Only one. Only one. Reference count is one, right? One. I was just asking query, x is 10, x is 20. What happens to the previous object 10 I was asking, right? So that for uh, that. Now RC is one. Now slowly I modified the X value to 20. X is made to point to the object 20. Now X is not pointing to 10, right? X is pointing to the new object 20. The reference count becomes what? Zero. When what happens to this object? Gets removed by the garbage card. Now what is your answer? If I say print X, it prints 20. Is there any chance of printing that value 10? No, right? What happens to that object? 
gets removed, gets removed by the garbage collector. It's not available. We cannot access it. Understood now? So this is what happens. X equal 10, X equal 20. Take this. Case for X value 10, X is 20. Okay. Understood that any queries, these four cases. One. Now, for example, x value is 20. Slowly, I modified the x value to 50. One object gets created 50. Hmm. Print x means what? What is the x value? Prints. What happens to a previous object? Gets removed by the garbage. Yeah. So whenever, what is your observation based on this? Whenever you got two variables with same names and same values, not same values, different values also it's fine. With same names, if you are defining, name equal to Ajay again, next time name also Ajay on. Ajay or some other name. Name equal to Ajay. Next name name equal to Rahul. What is the name value? Uh, what happens to the previous name? Garbage garbage garbage. So here, what is your observation? If you are defining the same variable names, the previous one gets removed, the, only the existing. But here, you may get one more query. For example, salary last year, 50,000. Salary this year, 70,000. Print salary, what it prints? But for calculating tax and other things, I want the last year salary also. Then how can I access the last year salary it's not available it got removed right then how can i compute that for computing the tax or for other operations i want the previous year salary also so here what we should do is you need to do like this Prev sal equal to 50k. Current sal equal to 70k. But don't give sal and sal. Sal equal to 50k. Sal equal to 70k. Don't give. This will be existing. This gets you. Give prev sal and current sal. Prev sal is 50,000. So if you want uh, two values, I want 20 and 50 both to be means give x as 20, give y as 50. Both x and y can be accessed. Both will be available. Both objects, two objects will be there. But if you give X as 20, X as 50, always this 50 will be 20 not available. These things you need to understand. Now. Producer and current cell. <clears throat> so these four, these four cases, whatever we have seen, I'm going to show you practically in the next session. It takes time. So one, two, three, I'll show you like that. Uh, writing the statements and I'll show you what is the address internally where exactly it is stored in the memory that memory address is going to be randomly I taken some uh, address right but internally where 